Okay, so now we've got our devices set up, we've had a look at some of the basics inside of Cubase. In this video, we're going to make some music. Now, the easiest way to start building a tune is to start with some chords. Now, you may not know which chords or where to put your fingers to even play these chords. We're going to learn how to compose using nothing but the chord pad and chord tracks, and we can use some of our devices to actually control these chord pads and chord tracks. Composing and creating music is easy inside of Cubase. Let's go and see just how easy it is. To start composing with chord track and chord pads, we need a sound to work with. I'm adding a VST instrument, and the instrument I'm loading is Hellion Sonic SE3. The instrument has a number of tabs along the top, giving us access to different workspaces inside the instrument. The load tab shows us the media bay inside of this instrument, and this is where we can choose different categories and select the preset that we want. I'm going with a very simple piano sound, which I could change using the VST quick controls if I want, but I don't need to do that at the moment because we're just using the sound to come up with a chord progression. If we close the window and move down to the lower zone, you'll see the three tabs in the lower zone. At the moment, it's a mix console we've got selected. Let's go across to chord pads. We're going to use chord pads to create a song structure. You can trigger different chords using your mouse, and you can also trigger them using an external MIDI device. This blue area on the keyboard scroll shows me the trigger notes for my external MIDI keyboard or pads. And all I need to do is hit one note to trigger a whole entire chord. The handles on the right of the pad will move the chord up and down, and the handles on the bottom will change the color of the chord itself. If you don't like a chord on a specific pad, click on this button on the left hand side and you can bring up a new menu which lets you change the actual chord itself. You can change the chord type, the color and also the bass note. I'm sure you're starting to get the sense that working with these chord pads is a really easy way of being able to compose music if you don't actually play chords yourself. It gets even easier. Once I open this box, this top chord is my root chord, or it's my home. This is the core of my song, and I just drag chords down from that box into a chord pad, and they are automatically going to be chords that are compatible with the chords that are already down in my chord pads. If you've got an external MIDI device, you can now just use your fingers to try and find a chord progression. If you don't, I'm going to show you another way of composing later. That's absolutely fine. But for now, I'm going to hit record, and just use my fingers to try and record this chord progression and get it into Cubase. So that was easy. But now there's a little bit of tidying up to do because I didn't play it perfectly in time. But what I do have is perfect chords. You can double click on the event to start editing this MIDI data in the lower zone. And I can see that my first note is out of time. It's behind the grid and so are a few of the other ones, but that's okay. As long as I select the actual event in the project window, I can select a quantize setting. Now I'm going to select the lowest one and hit Q, which is the shortcut for quantize. Watch what happens. It's moved all of the notes onto the first beat of each bar, which isn't what I want. So I'm pressing undo. So it's a matter of going back and finding a quantize setting that works for me. As I change the quantize setting, the grid also changes. So the easiest way to make sure you've got the right setting is to make sure that your notes are really close to the start of each grid line. I've hit Q and this is perfect. So in a few minutes, we've got a chord progression, we've recorded the chords, and we've moved them in time. There's a snap function in Cubase which operates in a very similar way to quantize, and it helps us edit with precision. Once it's on, we can select what we want our edits to snap to on the grid. So it might be a bar or a beat, or we can even use the quantize setting. So now we can only move this event onto the quantize setting that we have selected. A super fast way of editing is to have adapt to zoom turned on. Then we can use the G and H keys to zoom in and out. And you'll notice the grid changes as we do that. Now pick up on an event and you can only move it according to the grid lines. As I zoom out, there are less grid lines, meaning I can only lock these edits onto beats or even bars themselves. You can pick up on an event and move it anywhere according to your grid. I'm dragging down on the track to enlarge the part. Editing MIDI events in the lower part is very similar to editing in the project window. We can pick up on events and move them up and down. So we can change a chord just by picking up on a note. Contemporary music is made up of sentences and phrases that are building blocks. 
Quite often they're repeated for various sections. So let's say we're working on a verse. The start of our verse are these first four bars. It's time to bring chord track into play. Go project, chord track, create chord symbols, and it will analyze the data that we had selected and create chord symbols. Now we can copy and paste this out into an eight bar music phrase. You can construct more chords onto new tracks by dragging the chord track chords down onto a new track. And now you can see the chords are now in the string part. It gets better. I can go over to the chord tab and select follow chord track with chords and scales and it will analyze that data. And now the string track is following the chord track. I'm doing the same with a piano track, except now I'm selecting chords. You're probably wondering why I'm doing that. Well, watch this. If there's a chord I don't like, I double click on it and I change it and every track that's set to follow chord track will automatically change. That's right, the MIDI data will change to follow these new chords. Let's go and develop this idea further. Grab your mouse and your pen and enter more X's. X marks the chords. Double click on an X, move over to the circle of fifths, and that first chord at the top there is our root chord. That's our home chord that we always come back to. Now the circle of fifths means that any chord around that home chord will sound great in a chord progression. It's up to you in terms of where you put them. Of course, music is about building blocks. So once again, you can copy and paste these chords out, highlight them, and drag them down into the piano track. Later in this series, we're going to record a vocal line and we need a melody. So we can go over to Live Transform and hit Follow and now turn on Scales to see the scale with notes that will work over the top of these chords. Once Live Transform is on, you can hit any note on your keyboard and you will only be able to play notes on that scale. It's really useful for coming up with a melody that will work for this track that we're creating. Thanks for taking the time to stop by this video on creating music using chord pad and chord tracks. There's stacks of videos on creating music using chord track and chord pads on these channels. So please subscribe for more videos. Like the videos if you've learned something and stop by and leave us comments in the section below. Catch you in the next video.